Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at lurking and confounding variables. A lurking or confounding variable might interfere or influence a statistical study. So first, what is a lurking or confounding variable? Well, a lurking variable is a variable that is not among the explanatory or response variables and yet it may influence the interpretation of relationships among those variables. And a confounding variable is a variable whose effects on the response variable cannot be separated from another possible explanatory variable. Let me explain. So a lot of times when we collect data on two variables, we might notice some sort of relationship between those two variables where we see one variable and we think it might explain why the data of another variable. But it might turn out that there's some outside variable, some variable that we're not taking into account that actually might help to explain the relationship between those two variables that might explain what's causing or what's influencing those two variables. Let's look at some examples. Here, a researcher collects various data on children and their reading habits and scores. The researcher finds that kids that have books in the home score better on reading tests. Should the researcher assume that just giving kids books will make them better readers? Should we go to the school board and say, hey, let's just give $100 worth of books to all the schools and to all the kids in our district? Is that going to make all our students better readers? What might make the number of books in the home help also increase the book, the reading level of our students? So some outside variables that might influence those reading scores might include things like uh, financial uh, ability. Maybe the parents who can afford books in the home can also afford something like a tutor to help their students when they're um, have, struggling with something like reading so that it's not the books in their home that's causing them to be better readers, but that financial um, security is what's actually helping them be better readers. Or maybe another outside variable that might be lurking out there might be the interest in books. Parents whose priority is buying books for their home might prioritize reading with their kids at night. Or maybe it's the kids themselves. Maybe they really enjoy reading, and so they get their parents to buy them books as presents. And so maybe it has nothing to do with um, having the books themselves, but because they're interested in reading, they have more books in the home, and they have um, their reading level is better. When you're good at something, sometimes you'd like to do those things. So it might not just be the books themselves, that are, that's causing the higher reading level, it might be something like financial security or um, the prioritization of reading or the interest in reading. Those are lurking variables that are outside that are influencing our study. Here's another example. A researcher follows firemen from a fire department and collects data. The researcher finds that when more firefighters are present at a fire, more damage occurs. Should we send fewer firefighters? So here we collected data on the number of firemen and we collected the data on the damage that occurred. And someone saw that the more firemen we send, the more damage they occurs. So should we send less firemen? What's an outside variable that might influence those two things? What might cause us to send more firemen and also for more damage to occur? Maybe it's the size of the fire that actually causes that. When you have a large fire, you send more firemen. 
And of course, a large fire then would make the damages occur. So that's that outside variable that we're not actually collecting data on. Here's another example. A researcher finds that short eight-week classes have higher grade averages and higher pass rates. Should a college offer only eight-week classes? So again, we're looking and we, we go out and we look at the um, fact that these eight-week classes collect data on the length of the class, and then we collect data on the grade average. And we see that in an eight-week class, those summer or eight-week classes like mid uh, um, mini-mesters, the students tend to do better. So the researcher goes to the college and says, hey, let's just make all our classes eight weeks. That's obviously helping our students do better. But maybe there's some outside variables that are actually influencing those. Can you think of some other outside influences or uh, variables that might make um, students choose an eight week course and therefore their grades be better? Like for instance, in the summer, we offer eight week courses. What type of student might take those eight week courses? Maybe they're at a university and they're coming back to a, co a community college like Temple College um, in order to take those summer classes. Well, students that can be at a university might have a better academic skills. Maybe students who choose to take those eight-week classes have better academic skills to begin with. Or maybe those students who choose to take eight-week classes are more motivated, and so they're more motivated to do better in the class and therefore make better grades. So that motivation level or that academic level, both of those would be outside variables that would influence and help them choose a short course and would also help them choose um, to do better in the class. It might help them to raise their grade point. So just making everybody take an eight week class might not be advisable because if they don't have that characteristics, maybe their grades wouldn't be as well. So those lurking and confounding variables are just outside variables that might influence our study. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.